Time for another tear. This area of the leather is really badly worn, so it's a great spot to demonstrate. I'm going to make this kind of a gnarly one, and I'm going to cut away a little extra, make it a bigger, more substantial hole that needs to be fixed. So first step, cut yourself a sub patch. I've got my Levi patch here. I need to make it bigger than the hole. I'll start from this piece, actually, just chop off a piece. This fold can make it more difficult to work with sometimes, but I'm not worried about it. I'm going to round the edges for easier insertion. Grab some tweezers, work it in. This is an easy hole to work with because it's so big. Sometimes, you know, you have to take a lot more time to really work it in to a thinner tear or a small or a smaller hole and then come around and make sure that it's seated completely flat all around the perimeter before gluing it down. I'm going to be using 3M's plastic and emblem adhesive, but um, you could probably would have an easier time finding Loctite um, vinyl fabric and plastic adhesive at most hardware stores. Um, that adhesive is runnier, a little more difficult to work with than, uh, than the 3M that I'm using. And what I recommend in that instance is to maybe get yourself a piece of cardboard or, you know, something to work with and put a blob on there for easy working. And grab yourself a needle or a toothpick. And this is such a big tear, I could even work with a palette knife and apply the glue around the perimeter of the leather and tack it down to this patch. The key always, remember, to use a flexible glue, not a rigid glue like super glue. You need this to be flexible and move over the substrate independently. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Gently press it down. And then if you want, you can even use a hair dryer to help um, tack up the glue. Pull it up a little bit. You can even just blow in there. It doesn't take much. And then I get on it lickety split with a board or a book, give it some firm pressure. And you want to let the glue completely dry and cure before proceeding with your repair. So I'm going to do that, walk away for a few minutes. So when your glue is dry, you want to clean your surface before doing a repair compound. And um, if you didn't get any excess glue around the perimeter, you can work with just a water-based cleaner like the Flight that we sell or 409. If you got a little messy with the glue or you feel like you need to de-wax this leather a little bit, you can work with a solvent like denatured alcohol. I'm actually working with lacquer thinner, um, but denatured alcohol is what we recommend. Just a quick swipe, get off any, any armor all, any slime, allow it to evaporate, try not to huff the rag when you're done. For a really large tear like this that requires flexibility, you want to repair compound, not the sandpaper superglue method that we've demonstrated in other videos, which is more rigid and only suited to more superficial damage like thin lines or cracks and cat scratch damage. So we really like ADV Leathers FC1 Soft Filler uh, because it is really strong and flexible. It sands really nicely. It's non-toxic, uh, water-based. What else? It feathers and blends really nicely. You'll see that it's this creamy goo. Throw a blob in there. Really work it into these edges, the perimeter of the tear, in case you missed any spots with your glue. Uh, the compound will sort of act also as an adhesive. And close this up immediately. It does tend to uh, cure, air cure very quickly. You don't want it to spoil. And I like to work with a glossy business card for, for spreading and just do one swipe in the direction of the tear. You're not going to get it perfect the first time. I've got some little craters of the moon up there. That's okay. 
I'm going to feather out these edges just along the perimeter. You could also sand them out later, but it, this compound feathers really beautifully. And allow to air cure. This is going to take anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. It can be accelerated with an incandescent bulb. You could also use a hair dryer if you wanted to, but you want to be sure to hold it at, have the air blowing across it rather than, than pointing inward because uh, that will push any moisture into the repair and it will tend to shrink over time. So I go with the incandescent bulb or good old sunshine. So when the compound is clear, has become more translucent, and when you sort of like press on it, it doesn't um, feel squishy at all, it feels solid, that means it's cured and it's, you're ready to proceed with either more layers or dyeing. Um, this took longer to cure than I thought it would. It's a cold winter's day here in our studio, and even with a light bulb on it, um, it took about three or four hours. So if in doubt, just you know, walk away, come back. Um, so it does feel, um, I've got a little ridge here that you can't really see, but I can feel a little unevenness and, um, to save myself trouble later, I'm actually going to start sanding here and I've got some 220 wet or dry and I'm just going to cut myself. I like to cut the pieces in half and then fold them into thirds to make them easier to work with. So I've done a quick sanding just to take off the little pimples and kind of take down this ridge that I can feel and uh, just wiped it, wiped the dust off with a damp rag. And I'm going to add now more filler. I'm coming over more to this edge to deal with this ridge. So I've done a couple more passes just to get a good fill and now I'm ready to sort of feather out into these areas that need just a little bit of minor fill and also texturizing. So I'm going to do one more quick round of sanding just to kind of rough it up, get off any little pimples, smooth it out, wipe it with a damp rag, let it dry. Make sure it's not, if you do use a hair dryer, don't make it too hot before applying more compound. And I'm going to get pretty aggressive here and just go big up into these little regions. The vast majority of it I will remove uh, with my business card and sort of feather out. And that's a really nice spread, but then to keep, you get these little lines in there that, um, from the card or just, you know, it'll be too smooth if you don't texturize it. And I love to work with just a food handler's glove and sort of emboss the compound. And where you've got it on thicker, you'll see that it's a little more pronounced just kind of rework that and you can always sand, sand it down later and allow it to cure. Alright, so this dried very quickly with a lamp, maybe 10 minutes and uh, this feels great. It's a little, it's a little rough so I'm going to do a little sanding. I'm going to start with some 500 wet or dry. You don't want to sand off all the texture you put on there just to get off the rough spots. And it still feels a little rough over here. This could probably use a second pass. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate um, just to see what it looks like when you dye it up. Because even if it feels great, you dye it and sometimes it doesn't necessarily look great. So we're going to color change to rust using our Rev and Restore. I've got myself a damp sponge. Slopping it on. And 
so if you want to go back later and rework your repair, you certainly can do that. Um, you can let the dye dry and then uh, remove some of it with some 409 or flight cleaner and a rag. You don't have to strip it all out. Just get like, you know, whatever comes off easily. Remove that, let it dry, and rework your repair. Because the proof in the pudding is how, is what it looks like when dyed. I'm going to dry this. So you can see the area where I was I hacked open looks great, um, and it feels great too. It's really strong thanks to the sub patch. This area still looks kind of rough and, and scaly. Um, I might do a little more sanding and do another pass with compound and texturize again, keep reworking it if I'm picky, but uh, this is a radical improvement.